like to call this uh, October 3rd uh, meeting of the Montpelier DRB to order. Um, introduce the members here, uh, starting on my right. Joe Kiernan. Kevin O'Connell. Uh, we have Rob Goodwin. Three of us here are in the chambers and on the Zoom platform, we have uh, Jean Leon. Jean? Jean Leon. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. And then Catherine Burgess. And Sharon Allen. Sharon Allen, Vice Chair. Hi. All righty. Uh, thank you. Meredith, uh, yeah, we do have some changes tonight uh, for how we're doing this, but so I'll turn it right over to you. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so let me, um, well, Catherine just got on, so I'll make sure she's aware. Um, we've got a little technical issues going on. Um, it's not really going to affect those remotely. I'm remote because I had some issues with my work laptop, so I had to be down here on my PC. Um, but otherwise, things are going to be kind of back to just still the normal hybrid meeting. So for everybody on via Orca, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, and can you guys see the presentation? Mm -hmm. Yes, because okay. since I can't look at the big screen anymore. Um, so for those of you who might be viewing tonight's development review board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate via the Zoom platform through either the video option here. So you can just type that link right into your web browser, um, or you can call into this phone number and put in this meeting ID. Um, and if you do that, you'll be able to ask questions, raise comments, um, and, and discuss tonight's application. If anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me um, at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I'll be monitoring my email throughout tonight's meeting. Um, let's see, everybody on right now is on, is a board member. Just a reminder for anybody who does log on via ORCA, turning on your video is optional. Um, and please, everybody, keep your microphone on mute when you are not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, this is mostly for people on via Zoom, not those members in the chambers on microphones. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to just pass this back over to the chair tonight. Oh, a reminder, um, and this is for, for Sandy too, um, in the event that I get comments and, and from the public and they aren't able to access the meeting, then we'll need to consider continue tonight's hearing to a time and place certain. Okay, I'm gonna hand this back over to Rob. All right, uh, thank you, Meredith. Um, we have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. So moved. Motion by Joe. Second. Second, Second by Kevin. Um, all those in favor, uh, Joe? Aye. Aye. Kevin? Aye. Uh, let's see, uh, Sharon? Aye. Catherine? Aye. And Jean? Yes. Okay. Uh, Rob, myself, was yes, we have an agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, yeah, you'll notice there's a few more people on the uh, Zoom platform this evening. Uh, elevated level of uh, a sickness at City Hall, I guess. Um, and so we opted to, uh, so, uh, at least uh, <laughs> some people opted to uh, you know, not come in. Uh, but we do have uh, three individuals here in the uh, in the room. And um, with that, we will uh, welcome our guest of the evening with our first order of business. Um, but prior to that, sorry, we're going to uh, look at the minutes. Do we have enough people to approve the minutes from uh, the 19th? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, we do. Yep. Uh, yeah. Anyone have any Changes or motion on the minutes? Motion to approve. Seconded. Motion by Kevin, second by Joe. Joe, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Jean? Yes. Got it. Rob votes yes. Minutes are approved for September 19th. Um, okay.
Um, so the um, only application we have this evening is for um, 138 Main Street. And um, this is a review to re uh, request to demolish four chimneys on a historic building. And um, we have uh, Sandra here in the room uh, this evening. Sandra, would you just briefly introduce yourself? Okay. Oh, um, you're going to have to make sure you're speaking right into that microphone. Nobody remotely could hear you, which means the minute can't take or can't either. Okay. I'm Sandy Vitztoom. Is it on? Yes. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, we'll turn it right over to you, Sandy, in a, a little bit, but um, we'll have Meredith give a brief overview of the application, uh, just to get us up to speed, and uh, then we'll, we'll move along. Thank you, Rob. Um, I'm going to keep this really, really brief. Um, so this is a historic building, 138 Main Street. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. Because of that, and because of the language in our demolition provision that says any portion of a building that is on that register or the state register that is proposed to be demolished needs DRB approval. There's, there's no definition of what portion means. Um, and so I, I have to send this to the DRB. Um, based on my read of what portion could mean theoretically. Um, there's really, that, that's, the, that's the only aspect of this that's going to DRB. Um, that provision, section 3004, is the only place where the board really needs to make any kind of determinations. Um, and, you know, the, the, the board could try and make a, finding that something like this doesn't need to be before the DRB, but I don't know if that's really logical given the language that's in the regulation. So it really comes down to, does this proposal meet the specific criteria that are in this provision for being able to demolish a portion of a historic building? I've tried to lay out where I could with the information that Sandy was able to provide. Um, that's, that's what's before the board. A quick little reminder, we know this provision is problematic. It's currently before the um, environmental court for an appeal. So, but this is still what we have to work with. Back to you, Rob or Sandy. Absolutely, thank you. Um, okay, um, so before we get going, we are going to swear you in as a witness for this tonight's meeting. Is there anyone else on to provide testimony? I do not see anybody. Okay, um, so. Um, all those interested in providing testimony on this application, please write your, raise your right hand and be sworn in as a witness. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So if you give, the, give you the floor to give us an update on the project and where things are going and um, I I will say we are kind of focused mostly on the the chimney. I know that you've presented before the design review and there's a lot more going on to it. So yeah, let's spare you the, the, the details of everything if you don't oh, care. <laughs> of course, no, I, I actually think most of it's not relevant to this discussion, except for the fact that this building is incredibly inefficient in terms of energy use. And um, an audit was done, and it was the worst of any building the person had ever audited in over 20 years. So um, one of the items uh, that needs immediate attention is insulating the highest roof on the building. And um, there's only 32 inches of available space inside the attic at the edges. And because it's a roof, it's a flat roof with a roof train going to the center, it's only eight inches high in the center. So in other words, a man with equipment cannot really get in there and easily insulate the attic. Our, our options for insulating it are very limited. We're going to use cellulose. So when I got up there, um, it became very apparent that the roof needs to be replaced, um, either in kind or with a more modern, longer lived material. In any case, the insulation um, is going to uh, make it very hard to ever get back in again and do any um, changes. So this is kind of the moment of all or you know forever or just leave it alone. Um, change it now or forever leave it alone. Um, 
four chimneys coming up through that highest roof. Um, one is uh, not historic. It was made whenever they um, added propane heat for the hot water heating. Um, and then uh, one is historic and in very bad repair, and two are on the um, west side of the building, and they're in decent repair. Um, you cannot really see these chimneys from the ground. So we realized that it would be far better for the building to remove the chimneys and be able to roof over them. In other words, eliminating what, some of the major points of leakage potential, especially once the attic is filled with cellulose. Um, if there were a leak, it would be very hard to detect it until there was a really big disaster. You can imagine super heavy cellulose possibly collapsing the ceiling below. Um, so uh, it would all have to be vacuumed out in order to make any repairs in the future. So this is a good time to remove them. The other point that's really important in terms of energy usage is that um, they're not only a point of water infiltration, but a, pair, a point of air um, exchange, cold air and draft coming into the building. So even if they're sealed up down below in the rooms, the cold air would be coming down to the point where they're sealed. Um, in terms of energy efficiency, the state of Vermont discourages any new chimneys being built. Um, so uh, in fact, the state of Vermont is trying to get away from combustion. There's really no sense that these um, chimneys would ever be used again. So uh, the criteria um, are, well, first of all, this did get approved by the DRC to remove all four chimneys. Um, the criteria were very difficult for me to address. I hope you have the letter. Um, but they're really designed for the an entire building being removed and a property being used again for another purpose. Um, so um, it's difficult for me to assess financial viability and if there are other um, options. Uh, really the only thing that would need to happen if they were to stay is repointing one of the three chimneys. I'm assuming that the one that's not historic is really kind of not relevant to this discussion, but the one that um, needs to be repointed is um, in bad shape. But I, I, again, even that's really not an argument. The very important thing is the risk of damage in the future and the long-term economic consequence of not cutting, taking them down. Um, I did an analysis for DRC. They were also reviewed by a um, historic preservation consultant, Alex Tolstoy. And you know this already, but the DRC has several uh, professional uh, historic preservation consultants and, and it was a unanimous decision for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think Meredith, it wasn't it. Um, yep. I did an analysis walking from both directions along main street and there's only, I would say like 20 to 30 feet where, um, the West ones are visible at all. And, um, uh, probably like 70 or 80 feet along, uh, walking towards downtown Montpelier from the roundabout where you can see the the east chimneys. Again, the one you can see most is the one that's not historic. Um, you can't see the chimneys from anywhere else on the ground. Um, Meredith did take a picture of them from the park, but the the above Hubbard Park. But the reality is, you can see almost all of every roof from Hubbard Park, and I would say that it kind of blends in with the rest of the roofs. There's nothing making this stand out as an historic, important um, roof from above. Um, so just, I mean, that's just to highlight a couple of things here. Um, so in your application, you provided a sort of Montpelier Historic District Amendment, um, which sort of gives the listing um, of the 138 Main Street property. Um, I guess I don't I don't see chimneys being mentioned in any of the uh, <laughs> descriptions of that. <laughs> well, 
Probably because they're not visible, right? Right. Really from down the yeah. on the ground level, right? right. Correct. Yeah. I mean the the tower on the southwest corner that it's a like a Belvedere is is an important historic element, and everything possible would, would be done to preserve that. Right. Yeah. Right. The what are, what are the was it wood heat or propane heat or were they multiple multiple uses or what was right the... now it is oil heat with propane hot water okay the, do the, the oil does they don't use any of the chimneys or do they as far as a, an exhaust no it's got a separate so there's one more chimney on the middle roof and then there's the metal asbestos chimney uh -huh. at the very far back end of the building which um there's yeah. no plan to change that or the one on the middle roof. Okay. Um, board members have any questions for Meredith or the applicant? What's the current use of the building? It's mixed use. It has, I think, eight apart. I uh, sorry, eight offices and three apartments. Um, I mean, <laughs> Meredith. Is is there anything more to this than us accepting the DRC <laughs> recommendations? I mean, like oh. it just seems like we've just it's been discussed in in appropriate venues a number of times. But um, so before before I answer that, I think Sharon had a comment or a question. Yep. So if I, I would go love ahead, to Sharon. Um, my only my only comment was that um, that the impact is so small. Um, you know, visually, I looked at it also. You, you can hardly see the chimneys. Um, as somebody who notices a lot of details, it's not something that I would walk by and think, what's wrong with that historic building because I can't see a chimney. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that the increased efficiency is, you know, as Somehow I lost you, Sharon. Yeah, your audio dropped. Hmm. At any rate, I don't know the way. There we go. <laughs> it stopped all over here. Um, I, I just thought that it was that uh, that it was a very reasonable, um, very reasonable thing for us to to approve this um, based on the impact. It's such a small impact that if there were a bigger issue with, you know, um, some kind of historic demolition, it might be it might be something we would want to get into a whole lot more. But this just seems very small and like it should be fine. Okay, so I think going back to what Rob asked me, it's what it is, is just making sure that the board feels comfortable fitting this particular situation into the specific criteria that it's supposed to have to weigh this right. kind of, of, of question for determining the, whether undue financial hardship exists, right? Um, and the factors that you have to consider. So I think, from what I'm hearing from people saying, we can fit into the, you know, the criteria being considered. It's really focusing in on knowledge of the property's histor historical significance. Clearly, the owner is aware. They're doing a lot, a lot of work to do rehabilitation where they can. Um, structural soundness of the building. So in some ways, this goes, this is like a reverse, right? The chimneys could have potential negative consequences for the structural soundness of the building if the chimneys aren't removed, okay? Um, and then going down a bunch of these others, like Sandy said, maybe the board feels comfortable saying that they don't really apply in this situation, those other criteria. Um, and then, you know, we get the input from the community organizations and the experts, you've had that, they're all in support. Um, and then it comes to this weird determination about, um, you know, finding that, um, this is where it gets weird. The building site or object cannot be feasibly used or rented at a reasonable rate of return in its present condition or if rehabilitated. So I think, or. yeah, or, and denial of the application would deprive the owner of all reasonable use of the property. That's the, typically the standard for the undue financial hardship aspect, the board has never really made a decision under the um, 
clear and substantial benefit to the community clause. That is an option. I think usually I think that was geared towards something else, but if the board can rationalize it one way or the other, I'm happy to rate it however they want to. <laughs> it's this is this is a problematic provision. It yes. it's, causes issues. I was kind of thinking that that part B is kind of the only way that we can do this. Can you, um, Joe, you got to move your microphone towards you. I was thinking that part B is uh, kind of the only way we can do this as by the applicant's own admission, the undue financial hardship hasn't really been explored, right? You didn't We've explored it before, but it hasn't worked out very well. That part's under appeal. Yeah. It's, it's hard to prove, I guess. So, I mean, sitting here from my point of view, clear and substantial benefit to the community, the building will be more efficient without the chimneys as stated by the applicant and more weatherproof as well. And I struggle to think of any negatives. Yeah. So I think that's pretty clear. Um, substantial, sure. Yeah, I could call that substantial to have one more more efficient historic building. And uh, obviously the weatherproofing is a uh, pretty substantial benefit as well. So I think we can go with that and, and uh, make a motion to approve this unless anyone objects. I'm good with that. Yeah, definitely agree regarding community benefit, both in terms of, uh, yeah, addressing climate change and an example of a uh, energy efficient historic building. Awesome. Thank you, Gene. Gene's all in favor of that. All right. Alrighty. So unless anyone disagrees, I can make a motion. Go ahead. All right, motion to approve demolition of the chimneys on the roof of 138 Main Street to facilitate replacement of the roof on the main building and other energy efficiency improvements as described herein with the following condition of approval. Demolition of chimneys to be completed within 60 days of commencement, including removal of all materials and debris from the site. Second. We've got a motion by Joe and a second by Sharon uh, to approve the application as stated in his motion. Um, okay, is there any discussion? Seeing none, Joe, how do you vote? I vote yes. Kevin? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Jean? Yes. So yes from Jean. Rob votes yes. Uh, that's unanimously approved. Um, so uh, we will hear a from Meredith uh, in a few days. I guess sixty days here. <laughs> I, I have a yeah. I have a question. Um, so our our the team has been working diligently and trying to weatherize the building since May. Yeah. Um, I apologize. This didn't come before the board earlier, but. I didn't even get up to the roof and see the problem until August. And we immediately submitted it as soon as we could and became aware that it was trigger, triggering DRB review. We are at the end of the outside building season yep. where adhesives will actually adhere. And we have to insulate that roof this year. Yep. So they have to come down and the roof has to be sealed over so that water doesn't leak in and it has to be insulated. Otherwise, all of this wait, needs to wait until next year. So I don't know, I, I, I don't feel right asking for a special treatment, I'm not doing that. But the reality is that by early November, I would even say some, it depends how, how cold it gets at nighttime, it, 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 it just can't be done pretty soon. So I think what they'll be planning to do is put a temporary um, cover over it once the, the chimneys are down into the roof level. But um, I, I would like some direction about what to do because it's a very real problem. Are you saying that you can't, there's no way to do the complete demolition and restoration of the roof within 60 days? Is that what you're saying? I think it has to be done within 60 days or asked to wait till next year. But at the end of the 60 day period, it will be too late to adhere over and, and seal the roof. That's fine. That's fine. That, that uh, it's so um, demolition. But it's just the demolition part has to be completed in 60 days. So what removal of the chimneys and removal of the chimney debris needs to be done in 60 days. But when is the start date? 
Yeah. When that I think the happen. question was that about the question. Yeah. The start date will be when the permits. So so officially, the permit is valid thirty days after it's issued, right? Which is once the the written decision is has been signed and and submitted. You know, all of that has happened. Um, with this, the way this is drafted, the permit will get issued the same day that the written decision is signed. Um, or, you know, as soon as we can, if it gets signed at five o'clock or four o'clock, it has to wait till the next morning. Um, nobody has been here to participate in this hearing. Um, no neighbors have been here to participate in this hearing. You've gotten a vote and a decision. Um, so, you know, anything, anything you do before all that effective date during the appeal period, all of that, that's at, at the owner's risk, right? Um, we all know that the, the, the final, you know, crossing T's, dotting I's of the approval is happening. Um, it's not like I'm going to come out and say, hey, you've started work. We're going to work to take this permit for the demolition of the chimneys and separate it from all your other permits so that you get all those other permits for everything else that you're planning to do um, as soon as I can. I'm just going to talk to Audra tomorrow morning because I wanted to wait till we found out how, how tonight was going to go. Okay. And then it's just waiting for that written decision. And I'm going to get to it as quick as I can. I've got I really am grateful. You know, I did I, talk I, to her today and everything else is being issued as of tomorrow. Yep. And so that's, I've got, I've got, I, don't, I just don't like people I'm associated with working without a permit. Yep. I, and I completely yeah. understand that. Um, so I've got one and three quarters decisions of the two decisions that needed to be written before your decision done as of this afternoon. So I'm playing catch up as well, since we were so short staffed the last two weeks. Um, so it's going to happen as quickly as I possibly can. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's it. Other business uh, for this evening. Next meeting. Um, uh, October seventeenth. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Have a good night. And there's a couple applications. Uh, yes. one. 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 All right. One. Perfect. I mean, it should be on the pending applications website already for anybody who wants a little preview. Yep. Um. And you got the attendance, I believe. I yeah. took attendance. Oh, perfect. Uh, okay, with that, I'll accept a uh, a motion then. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Kevin, second by Joe. Joe. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Uh, Catherine. Yes. Sharon. Yep. Jean. Yes. And Rob, myself votes yes. Thank you all for bearing with the technical logical difficulties this evening. It worked out just fine, and it did. Good thing you all. Uh, have a good couple of weeks. Yeah. Looking forward to be back in person. Bye. 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 Thank you.